self-doubt. I'm Malin and I've struggled with self-doubt for a lot of my life. I've never felt quite settled anywhere I've been and I've always felt kind of a little bit more like an outsider and that may have also be due to, you know, someone who has self-doubt is more likely to overthink and ruminate. They're more likely to be a bit more introverted and high in what is it called Neur neuroticism you know they're a little bit more emotional a little bit more kind of reactive and for so long I've been kind of denying this you know trying to fit myself into this thing you know that's this disciplined kind of person that does these things and does it right now and I didn't really feel like that because I had so much doubt in myself and uh, part of me was also denying that you know denying that part of me that is a bit more creative and a bit more emotional and this can also be like a benefit you know like this could be seen as a good thing if you know it's a good thing because it allows me to have better compassion for other people it allows me to be more open and experience more things and be open to new experiences and different ideas and kind of this kind of broad approach can be really great because I'm getting all these different insights and all these different ideas from this thing over here and that thing over there, for example, from music over there, from soccer over there, from philosophy over here and from painting here and all these kind of ideas. And then they all kind of meld together in this kind of holistic kind of approach and techniques that are all kind of different, but they all have similar kind of aspects to them. And so anyway, what I'm talking about is self-doubt. It's when you're not really sure what you want to do. You're kind of feeling lost. And it's, it's tough when you don't trust yourself and you don't know what you want. And this is because you haven't made enough decisions based on yourself and based on what you want. And you've just kind of been going along with other people's expectations, what they think, or what you think other people would be acceptable for you because Responsibility is tough and you've kind of built up this habit, if you're like me, I built, I had built up this habit of doing things for other people and putting them in front of me, you know? Like if, for example, at work, you know, if something has to be done, I'll go and I'll do the extra mile for it, you know, I'll make sure I'm doing it to my best ability. But when it's just me in my own life, I slacken off on it, on it a lot. And I often find myself, you know, not cleaning up, not putting in all of my effort that I could. But as soon as I'm at work, it's crazy. As soon as I'm at work, I will do all these things for other people. And it's because I haven't built up this trust in myself because I have this doubt, you know. I, need, I needed somebody else to provide me with what I needed to do and to provide me with the expectation and the motivation to do it. And this is a tough thing to kind of overcome because you can feel completely lost and scattered and then you're like, oh, is this the right answer? But then this could be the right answer. And if you're someone like me, you can see all these different possibilities and it can be tough to kind of decide on one, but you don't have to decide on one. And I realize that I don't have to decide on one. You know, through these YouTube videos, I can share my ideas and philosophies and I can share the process of skills that I wanna work on and that I wanna kind of try out and commit to, but I don't have to stick to one of them because my strength is in that I can do these different things and I can put them together, you know? And I can do music, but I can also be a soccer player and I can also be a painter and I can also be you know a fitness enthusiast and it's kind of eye-opening to kind of see that you can be all these different things and with self-doubt you want to you want to just pick these things that you like and don't question it even if you don't not really sure if you love it you're not really sure if it's your passion and you want it to be something that means a lot to you things become valuable because we invest in them, because we sacrifice for them and we put in a lot of time for them. Like for me with music, I've spent years and years of my life writing songs, playing guitar, playing music. But a couple of years ago, like I talked about in um, my complicated relationship with music, I, I kind of put it off because I was denying that part of myself because I felt like I needed to be this person and fit into this mold rather than accepting these kind of parts of myself, you know, which sound kind of, it sounds almost like feminine, you know, oh, just accept yourself, just love yourself as you are. But it kind of does have some meaning and some purpose for people like me that don't really trust themselves and that are filled with like this anxiety and self-doubt, you know. You kind of just got to 
step into it and just accept it and just commit to these kind of things and build more trust with yourself. It takes time, but after a while you start to get more and more confidence in yourself, but you still kind of have this doubt and that's good. It means that you can see all these different experiences and you know, you care about your life. It shows that you care about your life and you care about your decisions and how you're spending your life. And that can help you to find something that actually means something more to you. And it can help you to also develop in the things, you know, like, oh, so what is it exactly that's kind of making me doubtful about this part, you know? And then you can kind of become clearer on the things that you do like and the aspects of things you do like. You know, like for me with music, I've brought, brought it back into my life recently because I realized I love the creative, create, I love the creativity aspect of it. I loved hearing beautiful songs. I loved playing beautiful chords and kind of creating this construct of a song and getting like my thought or emotion or experience into like this external kind of thing. And then, you know, the potential to share that with other people and then they can connect to it. And, you know, things kind of develop as you go and it can be scary to commit to one thing, but if you want to build trust in yourself, you've got to kind of stick to things and trust your decisions and then build more trust in yourself and start doing things for yourself. And you may think at the start that this is kind of a selfish thing, but you doing things for you is making you a better person to be around because you're feeling more confident and satisfied in yourself, in your life, so you can provide to other people better. So that's what I wanted to talk about with self-doubt. It kind of turned into this kind of like spiral about, you know, neuroticism and being open to experiences and that. But in the end, I think I got the point across quite well. So thank you for watching if you did. And I'll see you in the next video.